Blog Talk Radio. Hello, this is Live with David Hester. Thanks so much for listening uh, with us today. Uh, we have a very uh, special guest that uh, will hopefully be calling in here any time now. Um, with, uh, and we're going to be talking about evangelism. It should be a great show. The call in number is 347 677 1158. That's 347-677-1158. And um, if you'd like to ask our guest any questions today, please uh, feel free to call in at that number, and uh, I will be happy to connect you with the guest so that you can get your question answered. All right, well... So just as an update, today, um, wait a second, uh, so today we have a, a, a special guest, and, uh, and her name is uh, Tricia Ramos, and uh, she has a big story to tell us today. I mean, she was originally going to be a school teacher. And yet the Lord had different plans for her life. Uh, before we get to Trisha Ramos, though, I would like to make a couple of uh, quick announcements uh, concerning uh, my website changes, okay? Uh, as everybody knows, my website is www.biblehealth101.com, and uh, I have been adding all of my weekly radio shows to the program. I've been adding all of my weekly um, Sabbath messages all to the website, and now I found out that it was getting a little bit crowded, and so I have created two new websites to um, to hold uh, these studies, okay? And so those websites are www.weeklysabbathstudy.blogspot.com and www.livewith David Hester dot blogspot dot com. Sister Trisha, are you with us? I am. Hello. Hello. I'm glad to have you on the program today. Thank you, David, for having me on. So you have this excellent website, and it's uh, it's located at www.fishwithtrish.com. What is it all about? Thank you, David. I appreciate that. Um, you know, it's kind of the name's kind of silly, isn't it? Fish with Trish, <laughs> but it's kind of uh, you know. I mean, it is it is memorable. It's catchy, right? You know, but um, it is geared towards. It is a a website that is geared towards um, evangelism and equipping um, specifically ladies to evangelize. But there are you know men that do go on the website and can get some helpful ideas. Um, but it was it, the whole uh, website was birthed from uh, Todd Friel, um, who has a, a t uh, you know radio program called Wretched Radio. But before he was hosting the Way of the Master Radio, did you listen to the, to that, David, back in the day, Way of the Master Radio? Yes, yes, I did. So yeah, so I was doing some phone fishing uh, where we would get uh, you know people that were not Christians. I'd go and hit the streets and find somebody who was not a Christian and ask them, hey, do you mind being on the radio? Uh, real quick, right? we'll, talk, we'll, you know, we'll talk about what you believe happens after you die. And so I take my cell phone, put them live on the radio, and um, that was phone fishing. And, and Todd would say, we're going to go fish with Trish. <laughs> and then um, people would ask, and they'd say, what happened to that person after you got done talking to them? What happened? Did, you know, did they repent? What, what was their response? You know, and some people get really upset afterwards. Others would, you know, um, just say I've got a lot to think about. So anyway, the website was was uh, started after that. Well, amen. You know, there's there's so much uh, in the Christian world about evangelism. Yeah. Okay, and you know, most people would say, "Oh, great." Here it is, a new program. 
<laughs> you know, what what makes this program or this style, let me say, of evangelism different than some of those others? And let, before before you get into that, you know, I have to yeah. tell you, I I remember I've, I've read all kinds of evangelism books uh, you right. know, since becoming a believer. And, man, there was, like, if you're getting on an airplane, uh, you know, and you're about to take off, you can always say to the person sitting next to you, well, any time now, you're about to take off into eternity. <laughs> and, um, you know, there's, there's all these, like, you're supposed to say this, and if you don't get this response, then you say this. And, you know, I couldn't remember all of that stuff. Yeah. And it just didn't seem very uh, spirit-led. Neither did it seem very spiritual, uh, uh, you know, scriptural. So I, uh, when I came across your website and the teaching of Way of the Master, I saw something very different. Could you elaborate? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, um, in the, you know, about 10 years ago, David, um, probably more now, more like maybe 15 years ago, um, I heard... Uh, Ray Comfort, I got saved in high school, um, and immediately after I got saved, I had a passion for the lost. You know, it was like my eyes were open. I, I started journaling that so-and-so would be saved, and so-and-so would, would be saved, and that God would open their eyes, and that God would bring me friends that had a passion for, for God. Well, I didn't know what was happening, but God had, you know, saved me. He had opened my eyes, and, you know, uh, people will ask, they'll say, how did you get this passion for the lost? <laughs> and I, I take what Ray Comfort says. I steal what he says because he says, I just got saved. That's what happened. You get saved, and all of a sudden you realize, you know, you see dead people everywhere, and um, you've got to do something about it. Well, I started sharing the gospel, and you know what I, you know what I did? <laughs> I, would, I would just, you know, uh, roll down the window in my car with, with my girlfriends, and we'd, we'd yell out, Jesus loves you. <laughs> We would yell that out, but that that really made no sense. And I and I and I remember thinking, hmm, this doesn't seem very effective. And I would tell people I was sharing the gospel with people and telling them, you know, Jesus loves you, he really loves you. You know, just come to him, and everything will be will be fine. Come to him, and it will, you know, he'll fill your void, and everything will work out. Well, um, a, a girlfriend of mine, Charisse, knew that I was, uh, you know, had a huge heart for the lost, and. She told me about this church, and then I, it was called Calvary Chapel Saving Grace, and I got really involved, and then I heard they had an evangelism team, and I went out to Santa Monica, and I heard uh, Ray Comfort, the little, short, New Zealand, with a funny mustache, open-air preaching. I had brought a team of about five people with me, and David, I was so upset at him because he was telling people that they had violated God's law. If they had lied, they were liars. If they had stolen, they were you know thieves that they had violated God's law, and that they were going to hell. But I didn't, I didn't bother to stick around and listen to the rest of the context. I was just so mad that he wasn't telling them that God had a wonderful plan for their life, you know, and that he loved them. And so I was upset. I went home, was determined to email him or somehow find the guy and, um, and uh, give him a piece of my mind. But instead, somebody handed me uh, David Hell's Best Kept Secret. Have you heard that? Have you heard how this kept secret? Yeah, the book, yes, I've read that, yeah. and I've listened to the audio. Yeah, yeah. Well, I read, I read. The, it was on an old tape. Remember, you know, that <laughs> just an old. Do we do we even have tapes anymore? Um, but it was on an old tape, and I heard how this kept secret, and the quality wasn't even that good. But um, I listened to it, and then I listened to it again, and then I listened to it again, and I had to repent that I was wrong. I had been, I had been, you know, giving people a message that was not sound. And uh, the reason why I love uh, Hell's Best Kept Secret and Away the Master and Ray Comfort's teachings is because it's just so clear it's biblical. Um, we need, to, give, we need to, to show the sinner that they are sinners before we give them the cure, the good news of the gospel. And it can be done so quickly. And, um, and, I, and I remember as I just started you know, studying about Ray's ministry that um, you know, gospel tracts are so effective and how quick, you know, if you're not, if you don't have time to share the gospel or maybe if you're fearful, um, give them, just let the gospel tract do the talking for you. You know, give them a quick gospel track. And I love what Charles Spurgeon said. He said, um, 
something to this effect. He said, when private talk and conversation is not, um, you know, when you don't have time for it, get a good gospel track, but not just any track, but one that is eye-catchy and has a solid gospel message. And I think that, uh, you know, the, the tracks at livingwaters.com are are the most solid and eye-catchy. I, I, I carry them in my handbag. So, so in a nutshell, uh, that is the reason. That is the reason why I, I like the way the master and and their evangelism and, and the way that they you know show the gospel with the law. So they bring the people through the law very quickly. All you'd have to do is ask somebody. You know, have you ever told a lie? Have you ever stolen something? And they're judging themselves. You're not judging them. And um, then you know you show them that they're guilty before a holy God. And then you, that hell would be the payment. And then you give them the good news of the gospel that Jesus Christ is the only one. That can get them to heaven, and uh, he's the only one that lived the perfect life. He you know, died on the crossroads from the dead. What they need to do is repent, turn from their sin, and trust in him. So it's really easy. You can share the gospel in two minutes or less, and before I wasn't able to do that. Well, you know, amen. And you've, you've brought up all kinds of things. You've brought up using the, the law to um, share the gospel. You've brought up uh, using gospel tracts. Um, you know, I've, I've got on my desk thousands of uh, gospel tracts, and uh, I love to pass out the uh, the Way of the Master tracts and, and, and to, uh, to share with people. Uh, you know, he's got that uh, that, that new uh, gizmo with the magnet that... Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, I love that thing. I love that. What's it called? The uh, oh, lie detector. Lie detector, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, you can't beat it. The, 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 uh, the tracks are... Uh, are just great, you know, and then the, uh, you know, the one with the triangles and, you know, and it's like, well, if you're, if you're wrong there, you know, could you be wrong where you're placing your trust for your eternity, you know? And so there's a lot of, a uh, lot of great, great tracks there. Um, so let's just talk about tracks a little bit. Um, why should we use gospel tracts? Where can we hand out gospel tracts? Right. Yeah. No, I mean, gospel tracts are, I used to not be into them very much. I mean, I grew up in a church that, you know, well, I was raised Catholic, um, but I only went, you know, Christmas and Easter. And then I uh, went to a very, very, very um, hyper-Pentecostal church that was not into really gospel tracts because they'd say they're impersonal. And, and that people will just throw them away. But, you know, after hearing Ray Comfort uh, and seeing him, um, I found that that isn't true. Gospel tracts are, are incredible. You know, David, they, you know, they, they don't get embarrassed, right? <laughs> They're never timid or fearful. They're not hurt by rejection like we are. Um, you know, they don't flinch at cowardice. They, they don't show any cowardice um, when the truth is conveyed and not believed. Um, they don't yield to temptation. Well, um, they don't compromise the truth of the gospel of Christ. Um, I, love, I love gospel tracts. They speak clearly to the point. They go home where people can't go. I mean, if you and I are out with a team of people, you know, say out at South Lake here in Texas and we're evangelizing, I'm not able to go home with everybody. But we never know what a gospel track in somebody's pocket is going to do two hours later when they get home. They may pull that out and they may be the words to eternal life. You know, um, and, um, and and as long as they've got just a real solid, I, I've de designed one. If you go to, um, well, I'll tell you the website in a minute, but you may have seen it, David. It has a um, a headstone on the front, and it's actually a real headstone from Keller, uh, somebody's headstone that is so old that they it's it's public property. So my friend Dennis took a picture of it and 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 designed this track for me. But it says IQ test. What is the most important part on this headstone? And then it has a headstone, and it says your name here. It has the date, right, 1972 you know, to 2048. And then it says, dearly loved son or daughter. And it says, try not to read the back until you think you know the answer. Well, it's very rare that anyone ever guesses the answer of what the most important part is. But it's the dash. The most important right. part on that headstone is the dash because it represents all the days of their life. And the back says this. The most important part is the dash between the two dates. It represents all the days of one life. The Bible says life is like a vapor. Have you ever wondered where you'll go when you die? Here's what to do. Judge yourself by the Ten Commandments. And then it goes on, right? Um, the other day I was at the yogurt store um, in Southern California. And, um, and uh, my friend, that was with my friend Liz and Anita, I handed a track 
to a lady sitting down at this one, this one, you know, this, this tombstone track. And uh, she turns around and she goes, oh, like that. And I go, you never know if that's a good oh, or if that's a bad hot or what they're going to, you know, what they're going to do. But she goes, can I get more of these so that I can give them out to my family members? Well, I was shocked. Because when you give a gospel track, there's always going to be, there will more than likely be a response, right? You're going to get a, you know what I mean? You're going to get maybe it thrown back at you. And who likes rejection, you know? Um, or maybe they'll say thank you, or maybe they won't say anything. But um, the point is, is, is that even handing out a gospel track can be a bit intimidating. But I'll, but I'll tell ladies, just get some good tracks, and just go here. Did you get one of these? And give them to somebody. Here, here. This is for you. And that's a huge step in the direction of, of opening your mouth when somebody says, "What is this?" You could just say, "It's a gospel track." Do you have a Christian background? And boom, you're already into the gospel. And obviously, we want to use wisdom. If somebody's running, you know, running errands and they're going past this real quick, it's probably, you know, and for us to just kind of stop them dead in their tracks and give them a track is maybe not as um, maybe appropriate. You know what I mean, David? I don't know. Right. We want to use wisdom and not be like uh, offensive, but but you know. I, I say wherever you see people, it's an opportunity to share the gospel. So tracks are great. You know, you can give them out at sporting events. Um, I have friends that go to the bookstores and in the religious section <laughs> or the Wicca section, they go and they'll put gospel tracks in between the books. Um, right. Newspaper stands. How about pay phones? Um, putting them in pay phones. Um, um, shopping carts. My mom is so cute. She called me the other day and she said, um, she said, I want to put, uh, she goes, I'm trying to think of ways that I can, places that I can put gospel tracts, and I'm going to go to Costco today. Maybe I can leave it in the shopping cart where the little flap is at. And I go, Mom, that would be great. Isn't that neat? And my mom is uh, 60, uh, 62 now, so even she is passing out tracts. So it doesn't matter what age you are. It doesn't matter, um, you know, if you're tall or short. Um, if you're black or white, if you're rich or poor, gospel tracts are they are cheap and uh, they're effective, um, and they can be the way to eternal life. So there's all sorts of places you can leave them. Excellent. You know, I like the uh, the money track. Oh yeah. You know, oh yeah. That always gets a good laugh um, from the people, even if they don't care about what it has to say. <laughs> At right. least it's funny. You know. And um, right. I've never had to worry about, you know, getting spit on or smacked or anything with one of those tracks, you know. <laughs> right, everyone but, seems to like money, huh? And then you can even say, here's your um, Obama cash. <laughs> that's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, right. You know, but sometimes that kind of stuff does happen, you know, and, and, and how how should somebody respond to that? You know, that it's a good question, but it, it does. And, you know, it, rejection... It will happen. I mean, the Bible says whoever desires to live godly in Jesus Christ will suffer persecution. And, you know, maybe we roll our eyes, well, you know, getting your gospel track rejected isn't really persecution, but it is light persecution. It is light persecution. Now, granted, we're not getting our fingernails ripped out and our bodies aren't being burned, but it is... Um, it is persecution for the name of Jesus Christ, and they hate the gospel message. And we've got to be we've got to remember when our track is rejected, or when the message is rejected, or we're mocked or made fun of. We've got to remember that we're not greater than our Master. It happened to Jesus Christ, and it's going to happen to us. Um, we're not greater than Him, and actually, it's an honor. We should be actually kind of you know in our minds. You know, David saying, wow, praise the Lord. <laughs> praise the Lord, this has happened because the Bible says, great is our reward in heaven when our name is persecuted um, for his name's sake, when we are persecuted for his name's sake. So in my mind, David, what I do is I say, I go, cha-ching, cha-ching. <laughs> Every time I reject, I just think, wow, there's another um, reward in heaven for me. And Lord, I humble myself before you, Lord. And um, what an honor that you would allow allow me to be rejected for your name. And here's the thing, I mean, imagine if, if we were handing out Buddhist pamphlets or Hindu right. <laughs> pamphlets or something, you know what I mean? Or something that said, that, you know, here's the karma, you know, get, here's how you can get your karma or whatever. They would probably, they would, oh, everyone would be taking them. Oh, thank you, thank you. Because darkness loves darkness. But, right. um, but the light repels 
um, darkness. And so just know you're not alone. Um, there are others that are that are um, you know battling right beside you, getting rejected and um, and um, persecuted. You know, I was just out out uh, witnessing a couple weekends ago, and um, typically the kids out at South, like that's where we go. I go with my evangelism team every every Saturday night night for the most part, and we you know evangelize and and um, the you know the kids are pretty respectful. It's a, it's a lot of young kids that hang out where we go. Um, and they know us, and we've been out there. But about two weeks ago, uh, these these young guys, they were about 18, they were not respectful of David at all. They came up to me and they go, what is this? What are you handing out? And just really started mocking and just, um, and they, I had my tombstone track. It was right before Halloween. And they just started mocking, and I, you know, just shared the gospel with them. And um, it really didn't stop. And I said one verse from the Bible. I said, Jesus said, you must um, hate your life in order to to find it. You know, you must um, lose your life in order to find it. And basically, what that means is you've you you're you know you're you're born again. You die to yourself. God saves you. And um, they go, we do hate our lives. We hate our lives. And they pulled up their sleeves, David, and they showed me they had been cutting themselves. Huge right. cut marks, huge cut marks on their arms, and I just told them, I go, look, I don't, I don't know what you guys are into, and then all of a sudden it got serious, and they started listening. I go, I don't know the pain that you're all experiencing, or I really don't know what your lives are like. I said, but you know, the the only way that you'll ever be able to have, you know, peace forever, is by having peace with God and being reconciled to God, because in this world you're going to have many troubles. But anyway, that's just one example. Um, but what an honor to suffer for his name and to be mocked and ridiculed because he was. Oh, amen. Amen. Uh, now, you know, on your uh, on your website, yeah. there's um, a number of, of, well, there's a whole bunch of information, okay? But, yeah. Uh, you know, when we're out uh, sharing our faith on the street, okay, uh, sometimes we don't know what to say. And so you have an acronym on your website called WDJD. Right, right. Uh, yeah. Could you explain that? Yes, and that is, um, and I got that from uh, Kirk Cameron and Ray Comfort because I, I needed to use it when I first, you know, started um, hearing about the ministry. Well, um, when, when Way of the Master was um, started, I forget what year, I don't know, maybe it's been like seven years now or something, but... They came up with, um, yeah, the WDJD. And if you go to fishwithtrish.com, click on, um, what is it? I think it's clicked, click on, um, I'm there right now, so I'm just going to archive. I think that's it. Archive, scroll all the way down. Also, you know, while, while, I'm, while I'm on with you, David, um, for those that are listening, um, feel free to sign up for my blog. Um, and there's two ways that you can subscribe. And the reason why I say that is because you'll find out about free giveaways. I give away handbags um, to ladies, come up with, with new little, you know, just little evangelism tips and ideas for you to be able to share the gospel. You can subscribe in an email or subscribe in a reader. And if you go to my website, fishwithtrish.com, click on archive. It's the first thing that pops up. Um, but anyway, if you scroll down, um, you will find all kinds of questions for that you can ask an unbeliever, which is really good. You know, print them out and take it with you when you hit the streets. Um, and you know what, David, let me say this. You can share the gospel as a stay-at-home mom. You don't, you don't even need to necessarily leave the house. You know, to even, I, I work from home, you know, so I don't get out as much as I'd like. It's not like I, I go to a place of employment. Um, I work for Living Waters from home, and, but there are all kinds of opportunities to share the gospel. If you have kids and you're a mom that stays home and is raising them, what an opportunity. You know, I mean, you've got, you've got little disciples right there that you can be witnessing to if they're not saved and, you know, just your kids alone. How about when the, when the little kid down the street knocks at the door and is trying to sell the cookie dough? You know, witness to them. Um, how about yard sales? Have a yard sale. I just had a yard sale um, um, and I will answer your question, David, about the WDJD. <laughs> but I just, had a, I just had a yard sale the other day, and I've got to tell you, these kids were so adorable. They came up with their change, and they wanted to buy some things. Well, I ended up sharing the gospel with about five kids. They wouldn't leave. They kept coming back. 
And then they came back again. And then they came back again. I mean, I shared the gospel with them. I can't even tell you how many times. And, um, and then they said, can we help you clean up? We want to help you. What can we do? Isn't that adorable? Wow. So anyway, you know, yeah. isn't that neat? So um, you, there's always opportunities or, um, you know, when the telemarketer, I don't know if you get calls from telemarketers still, but um, share the gospel with the telemarketer because you've got them trapped on the phone. In California, they sign this thing, um, this agreement, David, where they say, they say, you know, they won't hang up until you do. So in other words, they're on the phone. You've got the, <laughs> you've got the telemarketer trapped. I don't know if that's, that's the same for Texas or, or what, but um, what an opportunity. Let them say their spiel, and then you say, now, real quick, since I've given a, you a real quick minute of your time, even though I'm not interested in what you have to offer, do you have a quick second for me? And then share the gospel to say, hey, have you ever wondered where you're going to go when you die? Here's okay. what you do. You know, judge yourself by the Ten Commandments. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stolen? If you have, if, if God were to judge you tonight based on the standards, where would you go? And, you know, just let them answer, you know, heaven or, heaven or hell, you know, and, and you'd be guilty before God. Um, what did God do so that he can be forgiven? He sent his only son to die on the cross. Here's what you need to do. Repent. Trust in him. You know, he rose from the dead. Jesus Christ is absolutely perfect, you know, and then keep going. Um, some people have to actually physically read the gospel tract because they don't, they don't know. Maybe their memory isn't that good, and that's okay. My mom at times has to just read the back of the tract because she's, She's so nervous. But WDJD, here's what here's how you can here's how here's a quick acronym so that you know you don't have to second guess yourself. And you can if you go to fishertrish.com, click on archives, scroll all the way down to WDJD and craft. These are both acronyms. And um, you just take it with you, you know, next time you share your faith. Um, w says says this, it's a question. Would you consider yourself to be a good person? That's what you can ask the individual. Would you consider yourself to be a good person? And most of the time, you know what they say. Of course, yes, I do. And how do we back that up biblically that, that they're, they're going to say that? Well, the Bible says that each man will proclaim his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? So, you know, everybody thinks that they're a pretty good person, right? Then the next question that you ask them is D, W, D. D stands for do you think you've kept the Ten Commandments? And... Um, you know, James 2.10 says, you know, if you've violated one, you've violated all. So, but most people think, yes, they're a pretty good person. They haven't killed anybody. Well, when you begin to ask them, have you ever told a lie? They go, uh, yeah. And one by one, those commandments should be breaking down that hard heart and showing them that they're, showing them that they're in deep trouble before the Lord. So we've covered two, right? W and D. How about J? J stands for judgment. Just remember, if God judges you by that standard, the Ten Commandments, will you be innocent or guilty? That's what you can ask them. Um, and then D, destiny. D is destiny. What is your destiny going to be? Do you think you'll go to heaven or hell based on those things? So you've just brought them through the law. You've shown them that, that hopefully they've seen, if they're thinking right, they've seen that they're guilty before a holy God. I remember, David, when I first heard these things, I mean, I was... I couldn't believe it when I saw some of Ray Comfort's footage and, you know what I mean, when, when he was doing this with people on the streets. I don't want us to ever forget. I feel like sometimes we can get, you know, not hardened or but so used to maybe, you know, this sort of evangelism that we just forget the power that is behind the law and how convicting God's law is to the unbeliever. And, you know, and I share the gospel so much, sometimes it just it just is like second second nature, or it can kind of get, I don't want to say mundane, but I love what, what Ray Comfort says. He says, if, they can't, if the individual doesn't he, uh, see tears in your eyes, let them hear the tears in your voice. You know, yeah. um, plead, plead with them. And, and, you know, and don't, don't rely on your feelings. I mean, I, I go and share, the, share my faith even though maybe I don't quote unquote feel like it, but I do it because I love the Lord and I, I love, I love the, the lost souls that are out there. And um, I don't want to rely on my feelings. If I did, then I'd be in you know, deep trouble. I probably wouldn't get out of bed in the morning if I <laughs> relied on my feelings. So don't let your feelings, you know, you know, or you getting used to evangelizing this way, come and, come and, um, come and you know, distract you. Just keep pressing on and sharing the gospel. And then there's craft. Um, I don't well, know before if we get into craft, yeah. before we yeah. get there, you know, sometimes when we're, we're discussing the, the judgment part, People right. say, well, I don't believe 
God is going to to judge me, or I don't believe in hell, or right. you know things like that. What are we supposed to do then? Yeah, when someone says they don't believe in it, um, well, I, first I would you know I'd say that's okay that you don't believe in it. Um, um, it doesn't doesn't mean that it is not true. If I said I don't believe in gravity um, because I can't see it doesn't mean that it is not true. If I go to the top of the, you know, my house or the Empire State Building and try to jump, I'm going to find real quick that gravity is real and that it does exist. And, um, and then I'd also maybe ask the individual, why don't you believe it is true? Or how do you, and they'd say, well, maybe, you know, what would they say? They'd probably say, well, I don't know, I've never seen hell. I've never, you know, seen God or anything. Well, I'd say, do you believe there's absolute truth? Or do you believe that there's right and wrong? Some people say no. Others say yes. And I'd say, well, you know, um, where do you get your morals from? How do you know what is right? How do you know what is wrong? How do you know what is good, what is bad? And most people, David, will say, I get it from my own, like, heart. It comes from me or from society or from my mom. If they say that, I say, where did they get it from? What I'm trying to do is show them that they are standing on the biblical worldview. They get their right and wrong. They get their knowledge. They know that stealing is wrong. Why? Because the Bible, is, you know, the law given to Moses was, I shall not steal. So the unbeliever has to pull from the biblical worldview in order to make sense of their own. So what I'm trying to do is show, that, show the unbeliever that they are standing, standing on, on biblical ground even though they don't know it. They have to borrow from the biblical presuppositions daily in order to make sense of their life, which would then show that, that hell is real, that God does punish, punish um, sinners, that you know, there is a such thing as murder is wrong, and they know it. Their conscience will tell them that. Stealing is wrong. They know it. So where do we get those ideas? We get them from the Bible, and there's a lawgiver. And that lawgiver will demand justice. It's just like our, our justice system, you know, David? It's like, it's like you know, we, we, we love, I mean, I love justice, you know? When we come to Christ, we love, we love justice. I mean, we want to see justice had. I mean, if somebody was, one of our loved ones was raped and then murdered and we're standing in court and the, and the, the murderer was there on trial and, that, and the judge let that murderer go, um, we'd be up in arms, and a few people would be quite upset in that in that um, in that courtroom. But if that judge is righteous, he's going to do what is right. He's going to send that rapist and that murderer to uh, be locked up and face the death penalty. That is right, and we rejoice at justice. But we have violated God so much so that He has created you know created well it was for the devil and his angels. But all liars will have their part there, at the lake of fire, in the lake of fire. So I, I know I've never met um, somebody that hasn't lied, well, except for Jesus Christ. <laughs> He's the only one that has kept the law perfectly. That's why we need him. We were not able to keep the law, but Jesus Christ stepped into our place, paid our fine in his life's blood so that we could go free. And now what we need to do is repent and turn from our sin and trust in the only means that can save us, what he did on the cross. Remember, remember when he said, it is finished? You know, he accomplished right. He accomplished salvation for his sheep. He finished it. You know, there's a really good book called Redemption, Accomplished, and Applied. Redemption, Accomplished, and Applied. And it's all about the, you know, Jesus Christ and, you know, what he did on the cross and how he accomplished what he had purposed for his, his uh, saints. So, um, so anyway, yeah, does that make sense? Oh, Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, so if they, you know, uh, so if they say that hell doesn't exist, we just want to let's push the push the antithesis. Let's begin to ask them now: Why doesn't exist? Why not? Where do you get your information from? You know, just ask them: Where are you getting your information from? They go, Well, I don't know. I just don't see hell or whatever. And then you just can, you know, sure. kind of use some of the ideas that I was saying. Absolutely. So you know, once you've gone through the WDJD, yeah, and um. You know, sometimes you want to leave them there, but sometimes right. you don't. So, right. So uh, there's an acronym with uh, that that you have uh, set up to help present the uh, the good news. Right, right, and that acronym is it's CRAFT, C R A F T, 
And, um, you know, because it's important when we, when we present the gospel that we mention, God sent his son, Jesus Christ, who was perfect. He never sinned. Um, you know, he went to the cross and died for sinners. Um, we men- mention that he rose from the dead because he's not in the grave any longer. You know, it's important to, to talk about the resurrection. I mean, Jesus Christ conquered the impossible. I mean, when we think of death, it's a, it, this can be nothing more grave than death. If someone dies in your family, um, I mean, it stops everything. Uh, you know, somebody that you love that dies. I mean, it, you could care less about work. You can care less about anything. All you're just thinking of is the reality of, wow, this is going to happen to me, and that person's never coming back. Death is permanent. But not, in, but not in Jesus Christ. He conquered the grave. He rose from the dead. I mean, that, was, that is impossible. I mean, we believe in a, in a Savior that defeated death. And so when we talk, uh, talk about the good news, of Jesus Christ, we want to mention C, okay, which is craft. Remember, this is the acronym. You can write it down or go to my website. C means cross, and it will trigger in your memory that Jesus suffered for sinners. He died on the cross from, um, and rose from the dead. Um, so just when you think of that word cross, just think of everything that happened with, to Jesus on the cross. He was put on the cross, even though he didn't sin, and he died, and then he rose from the dead three days later. Um, R is the next um, little letter stands for repentance. This is so important because we'll tell people, or I used to tell people, you know, accept Jesus into your heart. But that really isn't biblical. Um, I mean, you can go and search through the Bible and try to find the word accept. We want to try to use the word repentance. Repentance is just a more biblical term, which just means changing our mind, turning, turning from our sin. doesn't mean that we're going to be perfect, but it means we make a break with sin. Um, we, we cut it off. And I know that's what happened to me in high school, David, when I got saved. Um, one night, um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't uh, you know, what you would call a bad kid, right? I wasn't doing drugs. I wasn't, I wasn't drinking. I've never been drunk in my life. I, you know, got straight A's, was a good kid. But no, nobody's good, no, not one, right? And God showed me my wickedness. And it was through Ephesians 5. One night I was sitting on my bed, and no one told me to pick up my Bible. No one told me to do it, but I, I did, picked it up, and I looked, started, begin, started to look up all kinds of verses, um, and it led me to Ephesians 5 that says, um, no sexually immoral person, um, no greedy person who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. And I remember reading that and going, I'm going to hell. Because if I'm not inheriting the kingdom of God, what am I inheriting? Because that was me. I was greedy. I was covetous. You know, all of these, all of these things. I mean, Jesus said, if you look with lust, you've already committed adultery. Um, I knew I was, I was in deep trouble before a holy God. And that night, I made a break with sin. I had a boyfriend that I'd been with through high school. I called him on the phone, David, and I said, I will never be with you. And he goes, what happened to you? And I go, let me read to you. And I began reading the Bible to him. And you know what? He didn't repent. And he didn't see it. And I guess I, guess I could say he was not being effectually called he wasn't, his heart wasn't open. He didn't repent. Um, but I did, and that night my, my life hasn't been the same. Am I still a sinner? Yes. Do I still battle with sin? If you're a Christian, there should be a battle. You should be waging war against your members. There should be, there should be an inner struggle, you know, um, where, in, where you're finding victory. There should be victory. doesn't mean that you're, that you're perfect, but the direction that you're going is holiness. Um, and there was a break with sin. And so when you, when you see that R, we did C for cross, R, repentance. When you see the repentance, just remember um, to tell them to confess and forsake all their sins. Repentance means turning from their sins, kind of like if you were going in the wrong direction in your car. You would turn your car around and go back the other direction. That's what we need to do is we need to repent, go to God. Lord, I have sinned against you. I have sinned against you. Please forgive me. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Um, and A, C, R, A, A stands for and, go to F, C, R, A, F, F means faith. This is what they need to do. They need to have faith in Christ. Um, and it's more than a belief. It's a trust in Jesus for their salvation. They need to have faith in him. They need to put all of their faith in him. Not, not like, um, David, we would trust in, say, our baptism to save us, right? Baptism's good. We all should be right. baptized once, once you get saved, you know, and I even... We'll mention that when I'm out on the street. Say, now that you, if you've come to Christ, if you've repented of your sin, be baptized. Get plugged into a good, solid, Bible-believing church. Read your Bible daily. These are all things that a Christian should do. But baptism doesn't save. 
and we don't put our trust in it. Um, it it's just a work. It's a work, and God demands it of us. You know, we need to be baptized after we get saved because it shows that we are, we are in him, but that doesn't save us. We need to put all of our faith, all of our trust in Jesus Christ like we would a parachute or like a child would a car seat. You know, they, they hang onto their car seat for dear life if their mom slams on, <laughs> slams on their brakes because it's going to keep them, keep them in that car. Um, and we need right. to do that with Jesus Christ with a childlike faith. Put, never let him go cling to him like we would that little child if, if the car was to come to a screeching halt. You know, cling to Jesus Christ and never take him off. And then um, we're almost done with craft. C-R-A-F and then T stands for truth. Point them to the truth of the Bible and encourage them to get right with God today. Because there's nothing more important they may not have tomorrow. And, you know, you guys, I don't want anyone that's listening to feel overwhelmed. Just start with baby steps, you know, start with gospel tracts. And then go from there. I've got a, um, if you go to fishertrish.com, click on two-minute tips. Two-minute tips. I direct a lot of ladies there that are just really, really afraid to share their faith. And um, two-minute evangelism tips. Click on that. There's a video that will start automatically, so you might want to turn your volume down. But if you scroll down, there's all kinds of little things that I'd, I'd encourage you to read. But there's one that says, Take the Track Challenge. If you've never passed out a gospel track, I've got a little challenge for you, and then I want to hear from you. And then the next thing below that is take a one-to-one -one challenge where you actually have to open your mouth and share the gospel. But be encouraged. You know, take little baby steps, and it's an adventure. It's, it's a joy to serve the Lord and to, um, you know, be his servant. Right. And, uh, I, you know, I really do recommend your website, okay? Um, I, I just want everybody that's listening today to be sure that they go and they and they visit www.fishwithtrish.com. Okay, uh, it's it's a great page. Uh, even if you're a guy, you can get a whole bunch of of information out of it. But here's the deal. Okay, there's um, women have an advantage over men, <laughs> right, with preaching the gospel. So um, explain that. I know that sounds so silly, huh? But I laugh about it because I feel like at times it is true. Um, I'll watch my husband give, give out tracts, and then I watch me give out tracts, and he keep, poor dear, he keeps getting rejected. <laughs> and then I give them out, and they take them, so we'll laugh. Sometimes we'll stand across from each other when we're, when we're you know, out, out on the streets witnessing, and he'll pass them out, and I pass them out, and we see who takes more, you know. But I think people are less intimidated by a, a lady. Especially if you're a lady and you've got like a stroll stroller and you're out at the park with all your kids, I mean, who's going to be mean to you? You know what I mean? Who's going to? They'll right. probably they're not intimidated. They don't feel like you know you're weird or anything like that. But I don't want that to discourage men because you know my husband still passes out tracks and, and people do take them. But um, another way that I think that um, we have an advantage is by you know just when we go to the mall or when we go out shopping, um, we as the ladies, you know, we. We go, we'll go into about 20 or 30 different stores just to look and maybe not even spend anything. But if a man goes to the mall, maybe he's got his mission, you know, go to Gap and buy a pair of jeans, right? But us, we, we're given the same mission. We never end up getting to Gap and we never end up buying the jeans, but we end up at about 50 different stores. But that's okay. What you, what you can do is have your, your, your handbag packed with tracks, stock, just fill them with tracks. And I find if you don't have tracks, you're not going to pass them out, right? I mean, that's just common sense. Yeah. If you don't have tracks on you, you're not giving them away, right? And if I don't have tracks on me, I'm so terrified. I'm not just going to probably go up to somebody and say, hi, um, I let the gospel track be the, the door opener. Um, some days I don't even end up physically, you know, preaching the gospel per se with somebody, but I just hand out hand out tracks, and that's okay. Um, and so I'll stock my purse, and when I go into those 30 stores, sometimes I just go to the mall. I'm not buying anything. I go just to just to hand out tracks and talk to people, um, just to go to the kiosks, you know, in the middle of the mall. And um, so I stock the purse and, um, and, and give out tracks, and that's kind of why I think we have an advantage. We can go into all these stores, and, you know, and, and uh, men don't. Uh, <laughs> um, but we've got all those places. Imagine. Imagine all the places that you could hand out gospel tracks just by, just by shopping and running errands and, and things like that. Um, I don't know if, you know, when you go to the bank to... Uh, you know, make a deposit or 
or um, you know, I go to the B of A, B of A thing, and I'll put my little IQ tombstone. I've got a couple other tracks too, um, but uh, if you go to don'twasteyourdash.com, don'twasteyourdash.com, you can see the tombstone track that I'm referring to. But I'll put those in the little um, card, you know, the card slot, and for the next person that drives up, then they get them. Now, my husband, on the other hand, he's not too into it. He just he goes, no, I don't. he doesn't really do that. But I do. Uh, my conscience lets me do it. So anyway. <laughs> so, so yeah, we do as ladies. You know, we've gotten, we, I think we've, we, we're less intimidating. We've, let's take advantage of, of, of uh, you know, our womanhood and, and share the gospel kindly and, and use gospel tracts and use every opportunity to, to do that. So. Well, you know. You you give away handbags with a whole bunch of gospel tracks in them. Uh, you know what? Why is that such a big thing for you? Yeah, um, you know, and I've got one coming up here any day now. I'm going to be giving away a handbag. Somebody d just uh, sent me one. So if anyone's listening and you ever see a handbag that you like and you want want me to give it away on my um, my website, and you think it has a lot of pockets and would be really good, feel free to to ship it to me. I have ladies that that donate handbags and then I give them away on the website. Um, if you go to fishertrish.com, click on contact, my post, post uh, PO box is on there. You can ship me a handbag and we'll give it away. Just put a little note in there. But I think it's important um, for ladies to have a big enough handbag where they can have their tracks on them. Um, you know, I've met so many different ladies they want to share the gospel, but then they don't have, they don't have tracks or they don't, they don't have a, a handbag that's maybe handy. So the reason why I give out handbags is because I want to I want to equip ladies, even even if it's just one lady at a, at a time, equip ladies with a, a nice little handbag that has enough pockets so that you can fit, um, you know, gospel tracks. And I've got a, a video, David, on this too. The, everything you can find that we're pretty much talking about is on fishwithtrish.com. And if you click on a two-minute tips. Um, it's not the first video, but I think it's the second or third video, and it's a handbag and how to pack your handbag and stock your handbag with tracks. And I've got all sorts of different kinds in my bag right now. I have the curved illusions, which are really fun. The red and the blue. One looks bigger than the other, and then you switch them, and then the other one looks bigger than the other. And it gives a really neat illusion. I use those in Walmart, and people behind me go, how did you do that? So here I am in Walmart, and the people online are now asking me for a set. So it's really, really kind of cool. They're asking me for gospel tracks. Um, did you ever hear, David, about that time that Ray Comfort was in the um, the um, airplane? He gets on the airplane. He walks down the aisle, right, and hands out tracks to everybody in, in their seats. Because you know his pocket is perfectly eye level, <laughs> perfectly right. eye level to everybody that's sitting down. Ray isn't very tall, so he passes out passes out the tracks to everyone on the plane. The stewardess comes up to him and she says. Um, what are these? And he thought, oh, no, for sure, I'm in trouble. Well, she asked, she asks him to give her a stat. She goes over the intercom and says, this nice young man is, this nice gentleman is giving out a, giving out a, some, some, you know, souvenirs here or whatnot. Please make sure if you didn't get one, raise your hand. I'll come down the aisle and give you <laughs> and pass them out. I could not believe that. You never know the situations you're going to get in, you know, with gospel tracts. But if you don't have them on you, chances are you're not going to pass them out at all. So get get good gospel tracks. I've got them on my website. You can order the tombstones for very very inexpensive. I think they're like five or six dollars for an entire pack of a hundred. Um, Ray has tracks on livingwaters.com. Just click on store. Um, and they're, they're affordable. So Amen. And you have uh, a lot of tips on your uh, website on evangelism. Uh, two minute evangelism tips. Could you share some of those? That's right. Yeah, if you go uh, go on there, um, I've got. Let's see here. I think I have one one that plays automatically. The evangelism drive through tip. Um, I've got a Glenn Beck uh, uh, tip. I don't know if you guys watch Glenn Beck. I, I don't support his Mormonism, but you know Glenn Beck says some good things sometimes. You've got to be careful with him though, um, because you know he may seem like he's an evangelical, um, but he's not. He's a Mormon. So just know that when you watch Glenn Beck to get some of your news. He is not a Christian. Uh, let's pray for him that, that he does repent. Because I like Glenn Beck. You know, I think he, I think he genuine, genuinely cares for the country. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. He used on his program, David, huge blown up curved illusions. 
I don't know if you saw that, but he used these huge red and blue curved illusions, and he used them for his analogy to share the to share you know whatever his political point was. Well, I ended up getting a little you know small pair from the ministry, uh, LivingWaters.com. You know you can order those too. I think they're like ten dollars for a hundred, and you get two curved illusions. But I um, I, I mailed them to him, mailed Glenn Beck a card and sent those, so there's a little tip that you can do. You can write to Glenn Beck and send him some tracks. Um, I have another two-minute tip of the gas station, how to share the gospel at the gas station, and you can watch that. These are all under two minutes, so you can watch them real quick and you know pass them around to your friends. Um, and also the handbag. I, I show three different types of handbags. I think it's three, or maybe it's two. And then I show you how to stock them and pack them. Also, um, I have two-minute evangelism tip for your car. Um, and my car probably doesn't look as clean as it is on the video. <laughs> right now it's probably not as clean. But I try to I show you different ways where you can put tracks in your car and have them ready so that when you drive through the drive through you've got tracks handy. Or when you're out and about, you can just grab them real quickly. And don't leave. Uh, here, here's what I'm going to do, David. I'm not going to tell you what my um, warning is. I'm just going to let those that are listening go online and, and watch the, the car tip. Okay, because there's a warning that you don't want to do so that robbers don't break into your car, and I'll leave it at that. Right. And then, um, <laughs> and then a Halloween tip, which some of you may have already saw. Um, I give ideas for Halloween, which just passed, of how you can share the gospel and don't waste the opportunity when hundreds of kids maybe come to your door. Um, take that opportunity and and pass out candy, you know. And even if you're not home, leave a few baskets right by the door that says, take one, take one. Put a huge basket with candy and then another basket filled with gospel tracks. Use that opportunity. Right. Turn on all your lights, even if you're gone. You know what I mean? And uh, maybe you're worried, well, well, they'll take more candy than they need. Well, then they'll get hopefully convicted when they read the back of the gospel track that says, thou shalt not steal. <laughs> so, right. Right. you know. Um, then I've got another one, a Christmas tip. And this you can watch, you guys. This is pertinent for Christmas, which is just around the corner. I can't even believe it. Can you believe it? Um, this year is almost gone. Um, but a two-minute Christmas, Christmas evangelism tip of how you can do Christmas carolings and Christmas caroling and reach the gospel, um, you know, preach the gospel and reach your neighbors with the gospel. It's really neat. Um, some of the ladies in our church and things will even bake cookies or goodies and we'll go door to door. And we had one person invite us in for hot chocolate. So you never know. Um, what's going to happen. Right. And then I've got an interview that um, your listeners, David, might might like, especially the ladies that are listening. Um, I did an interview with Christian Women Online magazine, and uh, you, you get to hear a lot of what I'm telling you, and then actually see see myself and, and, and a, a friend named Sunny share the gospel with some some girls um, at, a, at a college university. And so you get to, you know, if you're wondering, you get to see it from pretty much A to Z, what you can do. Um, so, so yeah, exciting things. Exciting things. There's never a dull moment when you get saved and you live for the Lord. You know, I was thinking, David, you know, I love my dad. I love my, my family on my dad's side, but none of, none of them are Christians. You know, so it's really, really hard. I, I love them. It's really hard. If you think about it, pray for the pennies. That's their last name. Every t I tell my friends, every time you find a penny on the ground, pick it up and say a prayer for the pennies that they'll be saved. That was my maiden name growing up, Trisha Penny, but it's spelled differently. But anyway, none of them are saved, and I just think of, you know, when I called my dad, I'd always go, Dad, how are you? How are things? You know, and we'd talk about maybe a minute on the phone, that's it. Um, and uh, he'd say, same old, same old, same old, same old, you know, and I just thought it hit me. For the Christian, we don't really talk like that, do we? We don't really go, oh, the same old, same old. No, it's like when you get saved, it's like you're plunged into this war. You're now the soldier for Jesus Christ. He's got you on this adventure. And um, living for the King of Kings is exciting. It's like there's all, it's not just the same old, same old. It's not just the same humdrum. I mean, we we are on a mission. We we are, we've got, we, we must have purpose. So, you know, we've got to, We've got to be careful to guard ourselves from the lull of this world and just the humdrum and the same old, same old. No, we've been saved. God has saved us out of that. He's given us purpose now. And I think one of the greatest ways that we can um, get out of that rut, if you would, and not get sucked into the same old, same old movie watching, video game playing, Facebook, you know, 
Facebook, spending eight hours on Facebook. No, let's be focused on the loss. Let's let's be people that are people of the word. You know what I mean? That are reading the word more than we're on our Facebook. Let's. Be, and I'm not saying Facebook's bad. I, I have one. In fact, you can go on and find me, or <laughs> we can connect and be friends. But you know, really guard. We've got to be disciplined and guard the time that we spend on there. David, I'm not on Facebook very much at all. Very, very rarely. I mean, you know, every day I'm on there, check it, add some friends, things like that, post something, maybe see how a couple people are doing. But it's a limited time. It's a guarded time because you can get sucked in. And let's not get sucked into the things of the world. Really, let's lose, use all these tools for God's glory, you know, um, but be disciplined, watchful. The Bible says, um, what does it say? It says, be alert, be self-controlled and alert. For your enemy, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Stand fast. You know, we, we must resist him. And James says, you know, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he will lift you up in due time. So, Amen. so well, be we're encouraged. Down to the last, uh, yes, we're down to the last uh, four minutes of the uh, the program. And my, my ministry, my website, focuses on, on health and, and wellness, and not just yeah. physical health, but also spiritual health and uh, you know one thing that I that I noticed is uh, you mentioned about how God uses evangelism to cure depression yeah you know and uh, could, mm. could you uh, share just a little bit on that yeah and I'm on your website right now too David I'm gonna I want to look at it look at it some more but um, yeah, no, I, I think it's true. I think we can tend to get self-focused. We already are self-focused. You know, the Bible says, you know, love your neighbor as you love yourself. <laughs> we already naturally have this love for ourselves, but we can get when we get so focused on, you know, our looks, or we get focused on our, you know, what we don't have, or maybe the situation we're in. Maybe we're in a marriage that isn't that isn't good, and it can be depressing. Well, just remember, you know, this life is this life soon will be passed. What we do for Christ will last, and and I think that evangelism will get us out of that, get us out of that self-focus, out of that "woe is me" looking at our problems. You know, Proverbs says, "As you restore others, you you yourself will be restored. As you water others, you yourself will be watered." And um, and I think that, that in the context of that, it's more about like maybe financially giving or things like that, but I think it's, we can apply it to evangelism as well. That as, we, as we preach the gospel, as we reach out to others, as we're other-minded, we, we slowly begin to forget about ourselves. We lose the vision. We, we, you know, we don't focus in and hone in on our problems and on what I don't have or our lack of things. You know, David, they say that, I guess, if we have running water, clothing on our back, and uh, food, we are the richest in the world. And right now as I speak to you, not only do I have um, running water, but I can have it hot. I can have it really cold if I want it. And not only do I have food, I have enough food to last probably for a month, you know, and goodies like desserts and things. And I've got more clothes than, you know, than I need. We are so rich as Americans, and yet we look at our problems and we go, well, what was me? I think we've got to get our eyes off of ourselves, get our eyes onto the lost, get our eyes into the Word, the Word of God, um, and it will it will it will change things. You know, it will it will it'll give us a clear clear focus of what our purpose is in life and what we're to take delight in. Well, amen. And I I thank you for being on the program today. Uh, I would like to have you on again in the future. I will uh, for sure uh, contact you about that. Um, everybody, www.fishwithtrish.com and also be sure to check out uh, my website at www.biblehealth101.com. And uh, thanks so much for listening to the program today. Um, thank you, Trish, for, uh, for being on. Uh, thank you so much, me, David. Uh, and uh, and you know I really appreciate you being here. I think it gives hope uh, to uh, to some of those who are struggling with uh, sharing their faith. Uh, that one mm. too. So uh, you know, God bless you. And uh, we're down you, to the last couple seconds of the show. Thank All you. Right. I'm gonna go get. I'm gonna get my posture straight right now, and I'm gonna read your your newest blog. So. <laughs> All right. Sounds All right. Good. God bless you, David. Thank you for having me God on. Bless God bless. Okay. Bye bye. Right.